Does everyone know what it is to biodegrade? What does biodegrade mean? It disintegrates, that's correct. It's the time, biodegrade is the time that it takes for uh, any object, wood, uh, plastic, to disintegrate. Do you know what makes it disintegrate? Decom what, what, what are the decomposers? What, what, what group? Bacteria. bacteria, excellent. So in this case, it is the, the, the bacteria. Now, when we think about wood, when we think about um, uh, any natural product, it has bacteria that, that break down the wood. Okay, they eat the wood. It, they use it as fuel like you do your meal. When it comes to plastic, what we've got is a man-made product. And there are no bacteria on this planet that can break down the plastic. So what happens is, if you get a, a stick of wood and you throw it in the sea, it'll biodegrade, so the bacteria will break it down in a couple of years. Somebody here, somebody was drinking out of a plastic bottle. Okay, so everyone has used one of these, me included, yeah? Everyone's used one of these. Do you know how long it would take this, taking into account that a bit of wood would take, thank you very much, uh, two years more or less to biodegrade? How long do you think it would take that plastic bottle to biodegrade? Forever. Forever? Some scientists, some scientists would agree with you. Some scientists would say that that bottle would never biodegrade. So it's not wrong. Now, how, how, how this is, why is this a problem? Uh, plastics were made uh, just before, commercially, they were just before World War II started, more or less, yeah? So in the 1930s, all the plastic that was created then is still around today. Those plastic bottles that were created then are still around today and they haven't completely de uh, uh, biodegraded yet. And this is a problem that, that continues to mount up. The world produces about 300 million tons of plastic every year, half of which gets recycled. So only half of that gets recycled. And 8 million tons ends up in, the, in our oceans every single year. Now, to give you an idea of what 8 million tons is, who here has seen the garbage trucks that go up and um, pick up the bins and stuff? Okay. Now, how much stuff do you reckon you could put in one of those uh, garbage trucks? Lots, right? There's, it's got, a, it's really, really big, and they don't empty after each bin load. They go, they can actually go around whole areas collecting rubbish. It's one of those. Imagine it filled with plastic, emptying its contents straight into the sea every hour for 365 days in a year. That's eight million tons. Okay, so that's what, as a planet, we're putting into the ocean. This plastic breaks down. Okay, it's not the big stuff. The bottle is in itself. A fish isn't going to eat this bottle. Yeah, this bottle starts to break down in the environment. Not all of it is natural biodegradation. Some of it is just through being broken apart by being hit on rocks, by 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 other things. This this bottle will break down into smaller and smaller bits until it, the bits become small enough that fish and animals start to eat it. Okay. Plastic leaches out a chemical, a toxin. We won't go into the name, but it, which is cancer-causing. It's dangerous, yeah. And it's um, it, it's in our water supply because we drink plastic from water. Uh, it's in our food supply because the fish that we're eating are eating the plastics, and it's in their stomach. So the purpose of this exercise is not to find the big plastic like this. Although if you'd see it, great, because if you get the big stuff, you remove it. What I want you to do is get an eye in for the little stuff. My name's Luis Tanieto, and I'm marine biologist for the Nautilus Project. Today we're here at Catalan Bay with the third Europa Cubs um, uh, in here in Jib. We're looking at the plastic in the marine environment, uh, particularly the plastic that's washing up on our beach, and we're here to show them uh, how the plastic breaks down, what to look for, the items that, that you can see if you go around digging for it, to try and raise awareness of how, uh, how big this problem is becoming. My name is Kira. 
I'm Michaela, I'm from the third Europa Cub Scout group. The Cubs have decided to help the Nautilus project as part of their environmental conservation badge. Now, the Cubs have been working towards this badge and have been doing various activities to basically show them uh, things with regards to uh, recycling, uh, how to conserve water, that sort of thing. Part of the badge required them to take an activity and basically clean up the ditch, a beach, so on and so forth. We believe that it is a worthwhile cause that the Nautilus is doing this project so that the kids learn about the importance of looking after nature and obviously learn when they're in the beach, that sort of thing, that they shouldn't have to litter the place and be conscious that anything they do has an impact later on on the actual uh, environment. The way that we work is that we try to make things uh, fun. So it's not only about learning and doing work, it's also creating a fun environment so that the kids are happy with doing this job and actually have an understanding of what it's for. Basically what the Scout Movement aims to do, it aims to instill values on young people and empower them. One of the main reasons that we do things is though that later on when these kids become adults they can actually play a meaningful role in society, in the schools, in their jobs and within society as a whole. Now the way that we do this is through fun activities but behind these fun activities there's actually a lot of meaning behind it. So whether this can be, for example, towards the environment or can be we're creating awareness uh, towards illnesses, that sort of thing. <laughs>